And we will be continuing our journey into RPG Battle Awesomeness. We're going to start working through some of the animation aspects of our game. Reminder, all the assets are in the description along with the code and all of that good stuff. If you're totally confused right now, you should go back and watch the other parts of this series to catch up. We're gonna, we've been building an awesome RPG battle game and system. So let's uh, keep going. In this portion of the tutorial, we're going to be working on making our characters move and the ability to interact with them. So with the layout established, uh, with that all in place, let's dive into a bit of the code. Move. Let's start making this, well, a fighting game. All right, so we have our scenes, our sprites. I'm going to go ahead and right click and do create folder and I'm going to call this script, scripts, sure, scripts. There we are and double click on that. And what we're going to do is, well, enable these buttons to be used. So I'm going to go ahead and click over here. We'll pick the melee one first. I'm going to add a component and I'm going to call this make button. I'm creative and create and add. And it will be in our general assets folder. Let's move it over here to scripts, double click here and double click to open it up. There we are. I'm going to go ahead and do a split screen on this. Well, I'll just shrink it down, I guess. All right. And we won't need these panels. I'm going to hide them for me. Let's make sure that's all looking good. Make sure you can see this. Okay. That will be sufficient. So what we're going to do here is we are not going to need this comment. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And we want to use serialize field. So I'm going to Serialize field, yep. What serialize field allows us to do is that we can create private variables, right? So this is a Boolean value and we can still have them in the info. We can still have them over here in the, well, in the inspect panel. So we can edit and change them over there, but they're still private. So other classes can't mess with them. All right. And then for the start, we're going to use a string. I'm just going to call it temp. And what it's going to be is the game objects dot name. So that would be for this, the melee button. And what we're going to do with that name is going to game object dot get component. Uh, notice it's not popping up for me right now. And that's because, oh, nope, we already have that. Let's see here, game object, get component button on click. Oh, let's see here. Add listener. Oh, we need a two here. There we are. Space and equal sign, greater than sign. We're going to attach a callback. Oh, it looks like there we are. Get component always needs parentheses after it. I wish they always did automatically because that's what I use more. Did I misspell this? Hmm. Let's double check. There we are. Let me just kind of set this up over here Click on this guy somewhere over here. All right. Let's double check that we have a button actually added. Make button, sure. Yep, aha. Add component. We want to add the button component to this. And that should... Let's go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and create our attach callback function. So we're going to get rid of update. We won't need it. And this is going to be a private void attach callback. And it will have a string. And that string is going to be the button's name. Because we're going to use that. Uh, to determine the action in the future. So within this, I am going to say game object hero equals, which maybe isn't the perfect way to be doing this, but it is fine for now. Find game object with tag. Yes. And then tag will be hero. Okay. And now I'm going to be using if statements to check which button has been pressed. Fighter action is something we're going to be creating, and it's going to control, well, the actions of the fighters. So if you're wondering what's going on there, the most tangible thing we have right now are these buttons, and that's why I wanted to start with them. So it should be underlined in red. It's because it doesn't exist yet. Else is used for debugging. At least that is how I used it. And then it will also be used for the run button, right? Because if they didn't press melee or range, and this is triggering, unless there's an error, they should be hitting run. So uh, let's just for now, though, before we get into run a time, use debug log run button. I don't know why I'm capitalizing this. 
request. All right, so what we're doing here is if button compare to, and so upon the game starting, what happens here is on the start, so when this function boots up, <laughs> um, the game object name is going to be set. So whatever game object this is, melee button, temp is going to be equal to melee button. And then we're going to say, hey, game object, get this component, get the button component of melee button. And on click, so on its click, attach a callback. So if this button, I mean, not on click, get this component, on click add listener, attach this callback. We're adding an on click listener. And what's the callback? Well, attach callback to what? To this, to our object. Now, what's the going to be? Attach callback. Okay. Well, it's going to grab the hero. Then we're going to go ahead once we do that. And hmm, we could, yeah, let's do that actually. Let's just do private game object hero. And then we can just move this up. I'm going to do cut. And then under this, I'm going to do control V for paste. And I shouldn't say game object twice. All right. So then, because then we don't do it every click, we only do it once. And so now hero, what are we going to do? We're going to grab hero. And we're going to say, okay, if the melee buttons hit hero, get component fire or action, because we're using the buttons ourselves, not the enemy. So the hero is going to select fighter action melee, or the hero is going to select fighter action, select attack range. Now, let's go ahead and set up fighter action. I'm going to go ahead and save all this. Fighter action is going to be attached to, well, our fighters. So let's go ahead and start with our hero. So hero wizard, add component, fighter action, and create. Let's get this nice and organized first, though. There we are. Okay, here we go. And then we do want, I'm going to start by copying this. Copy. I'm going to do copy. I'm going to do control V to paste. And let's set up our private variables. I don't think we're going to use start or update. I'm just going to give it to those. So private game object, we're going to need enemy, and then we're going to need private game object hero. You could add these as public. I'm just going to add them as private and grab them by their tag. And then we're going to need a few serialized fields. Oops. So let's talk about these first few. This is going to be a melee prefab. It's going to be a prefab of our melee fight move. And same with range prefab. What they're going to do is be attached, be children to like the hero, the wizard hero game object. And we will have an animation inside of them. Then the face icon is going to be the little face icon on the fighting screen. That's in case you want to change it. If you get to the point of wanting to switch out heroes. And then also for like death, maybe you put a skull in there. It's just nice to have access to it. Um, and then let's add a few more private stuff. And those we're just going to be assigning the transforms for the melee prefab and for the range prefab. That's diving into the weeds a bit though. Let's focus on getting these buttons up and running. So now I'm going to do a, oops, a public void because we're going to need a, another class to access this. Select attack. And what do we have here? We're going to use a string, the BTN's name, because that's how we're going to determine the correct attack to do. And then since both the enemy and the hero will be using this, we want to make sure we know who's currently doing so because fighter action will be attached to the hero and the enemy. So I'm going to do a game object victim. Victim is going to be equal to does tag equal equal hero because if the tag does equal hero, that means the hero is attacking. If so, what we would want does tag equal equal hero. Whoop. If so, question mark, then enemy should be equal to the target. If not, hero would be the target, because if the tag is not hero, the tag is enemy. Uh, this is a fancy if statement, so I mean, I could also do, just to make this more accessible, if tag is equal equal to hero, what do we want to do? We want the victim to equal the if tag enemy. So if tag is equal to hero, the victim should equal the enemy. Victim needs to be then... I'll declare victim to start out automatically as the hero. And then if the tag is equal to hero, though, then the victim is going to be the enemy because we would need it declared. So that's a more straightforward way of writing that if statement. And then let's go ahead and find out what button we pressed. You could use a switch or an if here. I'm just going to go with the traditional if btn.compare to. So I'm comparing the button's name to the word melee. Well, to clarify, not the actual button's name, right? The word I pass. And if it's a melee attack, I pass melee. If not, I, ooh, that should be fighter. Or I pass range. So I'm going to say, hey, if it is melee, if that's the string being passed, what do I want to do? For now, let's just do a debug. Dot log melee attack. 
And then what I'm going to do now, honestly, I'm just going to control C this. I'm going to write the word else. I'm going to control V this. And then instead of melee, we would need a range. And if it's equal to range, we would write range. And then finally, else, we'll just say it's equal to run. And so we're going to do a debug.log run. Good. Let's save all of this. It's grumpy about something, though. Compare to. Ah, we got to make sure this is equal to zero. Equals equals zero. Because if they are the same, right? So if button is the same, if button if the button string is melee, it will be equal to zero. That's how the computer says yes. When it compares them, yes, it is the same. So we got to compare that to zero. All right. Let's save all this and see if we can get our debug to pop up. Let's go to the console and hit run. Hmm, tag hero is not defined. Got it. Do we not have a tag? Nope. Did we make one? Nope. All right. Let's go ahead then. And we're going to be using tags a lot. So let's save hero. And I'm going to add enemy as well. Save. Okay. And so let's then establish that for both of them. Hero tag. Enemy tag. And I'm going to do file save. Let's clear this off. And now, oh, you know what? I bet. So for our buttons, I'm going to click on our melee button here. Notice it's intractable. You really need that. You also need Raycaster. However, if they're on an object that doesn't have a Raycaster because they don't think our action menu does yet, yes, it will not work. So let's go ahead and Raycaster. Boom. Boom. All right. Now with this added, let's give it a shot. And there we are. Our melee attack's ready to go. So let's go ahead and add this functionality to our range. Um, we don't need that. We need the make button. And then to run. Yes. And let's see. Oh, we left off. We added make button, but we didn't add, well, the button component. Boom. And I just want this moved up one, actually. And let's make sure for range. Yep, we left it off here, too. Up, uh, And then let's go ahead and clear these guys out. And I'm going to control S to save. But let's see. Range. Uh, did we not do a run alert? Melee attack. Let's double check on run here. Run, debug, range attack, string. What string do we send? Oh, we don't call it. So, or do we? Else. Yeah, so else we're not doing anything right now. So we can go ahead and say, I'm going to do control C, control V, and just write run here. And that should spit that out if we put it in fighter action to do so. Dog, yeah, uh, range, else, so no matter what else, run. All right, so now let's actually go with the animations. We have some, we have some options here. Let's make our player, well, actually look like they are attacking. So let's go ahead and clear this and select our project again and our assets. And I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call that folder animations. Okay, and with that up there, I'm now going to create a folder within it and title that folder wizard for our wizard animations. Double click. Let's go to our wizard over here and add a component. The component we're going to be adding is an animator. Yes, this is perfect. Let's find assets, animations. Oh, we still need to add a controller. So now, well, we can actually do create animation animator controller. And I'm going to say wizard animator, pretty straightforward there. And let's go ahead and click on our wizard hero here. And I'm going to drag this over and drop in the controller right there. Okay. And we won't need an avatar at this moment, but we are going to need to start working on some animations. So I double clicked on this and that brought up the animator window. First though, we are going to need window animation, animation. And I'm going to attach this here. All right, and let's click on our wizard. We're going to need to go to our sprites, and let me shrink this down. Not the giant yet, but our wizard. And we need a few. So we already know we need idle. So I'm going to hit create here, and ID LE for idle, which I always spell wrong. And we don't want it here. We want it in our assets, and in our animations, and in our wizard animation. Idle. So let's hit save. And perfect. That will go ahead and pop up. Now let's see here. It looks like this animation goes to possibly. We'll find out. I'm going to click all these and just pull up and drop. Ah, so we don't want them on the fighter action. We want them for a sprite renderer. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. Boom. And now I'm going to just pull these out. Let's say about 50 seconds. And let's go ahead and view it. Oh, okay. 
Oh, right. We actually need here animation. Let's pause that. Let's pull our game. I'm just going to drop it. Oh, if it lets me. There we are. Here for now. And then let's go ahead and preview. And it looks like this last one here might be the start of the next move. So I'm just going to, it's fine. I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. And there we are. Also, sometimes if you want to extend an animation a bit or make it smoother, what can help with that is to grab the last section of the animation, this guy, and just duplicate it or put a second one. So now let's see here. Yeah. Perfect. So that will be our first. Let me enlarge this. Now we need the melee attack. Uh, so let's go ahead and do create new. And it's in the right folder. Save. Project. So we have some options here. I'm going to say, though, that this one is looking more melee-esque to me. And this one, he looks like he's throwing something. So great. Is there a lead up to that one? Yeah, that must be the lead up. OK. And then this two here looked like the melee. So I'm going to pull up. Sprite render. Uh, 50 seconds is often good, so it's kind of where I default to. <laughs> that is wonderful, actually. All right, and now let's do a... You could call this range or uh, magic attack. I'm going to stick with the terminology I've been using. Decisions, decisions. Oh, this is a spell. Oh, I love that. Because that would be a range attack. Yeah, it looks so. Okay, well, cool. I'm going to say it is. I'm going to grab all of this. Sprite renderer. And maybe so it's not too fast. We can try it out a minute and see what we think. I love it. I might give this more time. I think it's kind of worth it. Super quick. And we can always also play with the frames. Oh, well. Oh, well. That just moves around where you're actually at. And eh, we'll just grab this. I'm liking that. Awesome. And then finally, we would want a hit or an injury. So let's do that. Injury or damage, maybe. You're taking damage. Okay, we'll call that damage then. Save. And then budget. And it usually on these, let's see. So it looks like these last four will be our damage. Maybe 20 seconds for that. Quick damage. Let's see. Let me draw it out a bit. Might do like 25 and then do. Uh, let's start with this first one. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go all the way to here. Let's pull these up, drop, and sprite render. Go to 25, and I am going to repeat the last frame. Yeah, there we are. Okay. So now we got a bunch of animations for our attacks. Great. What we should do now, though, to get those animations up and running, we will need to add a bit more code. So in the next episode, we're going to be working on adding that code, not just to get the animations ready to rock, but also to add stats to the player, such as their health, their, you know, their strength, their speed, all of those really great, fun, and engaging parts of an RPG that allow you to create characters and allow you to battle one another.